dear learners welcome to this our second lecture on human resource management this is again the unit 13 in block 4 of your course ts3 in our earlier lecture on human resource management we have spoken about the concept we have discussed the definition of human resource management and we have spoken about the role of human resource management in case of tourism services now in this particular in this lecture we will uh, do a small revision about concept and meaning of the human resources management then we will understand the human resource management process we will also understand the meaning and importance of the human resource planning and then we will appreciate the steps involved in the human resource management process means in the first lecture we have spoken about the concept and meaning of human resource management and this lecture we will focus on the human resource management process so let us do a small recap what is human resource management? Human resource management is the branch of management that deals with people at work. It is concerned with the human dimension of management of the organization. As an organization consists of people, therefore acquiring them, developing their skills, providing them motivation in order to attain the higher goals and ensuring that their level of commitment is maintained. These are main objectives of HRM. Now again the definition of human resource management, HRM is planning, organizing, directing and controlling of the procurement, development, compensation, integration, maintenance and separation of the human resources to the end that individual, organizational and social objectives are accomplished. There is one more definition of human resource management that has given by the National Institute of Personal Management in India and it defines human resource management as that part of management which is concerned with people at work and with their relationship within an enterprises. Its aim is to bring together and develop into an effective organization of the men and women who make up the enterprise and having regard for the well-being of the individuals and of working groups to enable them to make their best contribution to its success. See, this definition is focusing on the people who are working in an organization and their relationship within the groups and with their enterprises. And ultimately, the objective is to achieve the organizational and individual goals. So, what is human resource management process? How we manage the human resources? So, process means it is a series of actions that are done for a specific purpose. So, Human resource management or HRM process simply means it is the series of actions that are done to manage the human resources of an organization. Or it can be defined as the series of actions performed to manage the human dimension of organization's overall management. It includes the usual management functions that involve planning, organizing, directing and controlling. So human resource management, it deals with the personal function or the human dimension of the or organization's overall management and like any other management it also includes the usual management functions that involves planning organizing directing and controlling so what are the various steps in hrm process the first is human resource planning then recruitment then selection then the next step will be socialization and induction then training and development, then performance appraisal, then promotions, transfers and demotion and then in the end it is separation. The separation can be on account of retirement, it can be on account of resignation and it can be on account of termination. These are the steps in human resource management process. Now we will discuss each of the steps in detail. So first of all, it is human resource planning. What is planning? Planning simply means deciding in advance. So human resource planning can be termed as the process for preparing a plan or a chart for the future personal needs of an organization. In simple words, it is the process of forecasting an organization's future demand and supply of right type of people in right number at right time. It also takes into account the internal activities of the organization and external environmental factors. In a service industry, like in case of tourism, such planning, it also aims at improving the quality of manpower resources. 
so human resource planning it is simply deciding in advance how much manpower will be required what will be the skills of the manpower required and from where to get this manpower so it is the way by which we are we will decide in advance that how many persons are required what are the skills required how to recruit them how to select them how to train them it is the blueprint so human resource planning it involves analysis of the existing manpower resources means how many persons are currently working planning for the future needs taking into account how many people with what skills and at what levels the organization will need so we will also plan for the future like how many people will be required what will be their skills and at what levels of the organization we will need them then we have to plan for the development of the employees by adopting in house training or we need to develop them by continuous education methods to upgrade the knowledge and skills of the employees the next step in human resource management process is recruitment see in human resource planning we have planned how many persons are required at what level and for what skills now in recruitment it is simply the process of locating identifying and attracting the right kind of people in right numbers at right time the core purpose of this recruitment is to develop a pool of candidates who are qualified for a specific job position see we are not talking about selection here we are simply talking about developing a pool of candidates who are eligible and who are qualified for a specific job position depending on from where the potential candidates are being located recruitment it can be external recruitment or it can be internal recruitment means when we look for the potential candidates outside the organization it becomes external recruitment when we look for the potential candidates within the organization it is internal recruitment recruitment basically it covers the job description in case of the recruitment we need to give the job description which is simply the outline of the job position with brief on the responsibilities remuneration possible place of posting etc then we also need to give the candidate specifications on the basis of job description what kind of candidates they will be required what will be their qualifications what will be their skills required their qualification and skill they can be divided into essential as well as desirable then the recruitment also need to give the contact details and mode through which the potential candidates they can express their interest I mean how they can apply there can be online applications there can be offline applications they can also apply by writing a letter they need to submit their cv or there can be a specially designed application form so the recruitment it needs to give the details to the potential candidates about the job description that this is the job these will be the authorities and responsibilities this will be the remuneration and these can be possible places of posting then the what kind of candidates they require what should be the qualification and skills and third how the candidates they can apply next step is selection selection is the process of choosing the best suited candidate for a position from the available pool of eligible candidates it is the process of matching the organization's needs and requirements with that of candidates skills and qualifications means selection it is simply the process in recruitment we have created a pool now out of that pool we need to select the best candidate so it is the process through which we select the best candidate what we basically do we match the organization's needs and requirement with that of the candidate skills and qualifications methods of selection depends on various factors like the job description what kind of the job is this how much time is available to fill the vacant position and how many applications have been received how many vacancies are there there can be various methods of selection and the choice of method will depend on these factors so what are various methods of selection uh, any one or combination from the below methods can be used for selecting the best suited candidates first of all there can be a direct interview interviews are simply the face to face communications so interviews it can be face to face interview there can be telephonic interviews also there can be video interviews also depending on the convenience of the organization as well as the candidates further there can be one to one interview there can be interview by a board 
Now the interviews can also be structured interview or there can be unstructured interviews. In case of structured interviews, the process of interview is rigidly defined, means how the interview will proceed, it is already defined. In case of unstructured interviews, it is simply the between the interviewer and interviewee, how the interview is going to proceed, there is no defined structure. Interview method, it gives fastest result, but it also suffers from the subjectivity and it is time consuming in case of large number of candidates. So if we have exceptionally large number of candidates, then interviewing each and every candidate, it becomes time consuming as well as costly. Another selection method, it can be written test. This is one of the most popular form of selection methods, especially in case of government organizations. We all are familiar with the various tests that the government, they conduct to recruit persons. The written test, it can be subjective or it can be objective as per the job requirements. Then there can be physical fitness test in case of jobs related to defense and law enforcement agencies, physical fitness of candidates is of vital importance and hence the selection criteria specifically mentions the physical fitness test of the candidates. Suppose we want, to, uh, we want to recruit the candidates for the security department of a hotel, then the physical fitness test is required. Skills test, in case of some specific skills are required for a job, there can be skill test as part of selection process. For example, in case of selection for a ticketing executive in a travel agency or airline, specific skills of the candidate on various ticketing softwares can be used as selection method, means we can test the candidate on his skills on the ticketing software like Amadeus or uh, Galileo etc. Further there can be other selection methods also like there can be psychometric test which gives the information about the personality, there can be in-depth interviews, there can be medical tests, background checks etc. before finally selecting a candidate. After selecting a candidate, the next part is socialization and induction. Socialization and induction is aimed at introducing the new employee to his job and organization. This program should be developed in such a way that a new employee get all the information he requires to perform his duties comfortably and effectively in new role and new organization. An effective induction program should include the journal information about the daily work routine, the basic review of the organization's history, vision, mission, products and services etc. Basically in socialization and induction, the candidate they get to know more about the organization as well as the organization they get to know more about the candidate. Then the socialization and induction also includes the presentation with regard to organization's work and conduct rules, the employee benefit programs etc. See, the orient, uh, employee orientation can have two dimensions. One is work unit orientation, where the employee, the new employee is being familiarized with his specific work unit, his peer group, his subordinates, his superiors, etc. Then another part can be organization's orientation, which familiarizes the employee with overall organization in terms of its history, product, services, various locations, etc. So in case of uh, socialization and induction program, the employees they know about the work unit, they know more about the organization. The next part in human resource management process is training and development. See all these uh, parts, they are interrelated. First of all, we plan, then we recruit, then we select, then the employees, they are socialized and the next part comes is training and development. So training is the process to upgrade and improve the specific skills of an individual employee or group of employees. Training can be for an individual, it can also be for the group. Training process starts with the need analysis, that is who needs the training, what kind of training is required, what can be best mode of training and how to measure the effectiveness of training. On the other hand, development is the process designed to develop the skills necessary for future work activities. It is a broader concept as compared to training. See the training it focus on the present requirements, while the development it focus on the future requirements. So the difference between training and development, as we have spoken, training focuses on the current improvements in 
job while the development focuses on the improvement improving the skills which will be used in future though managers as well as non managers they both benefit from training and development programs but training programs they specifically focus on the non managers means executive level positions while the development programs they are designed for the managers to equip them for the skills required for higher responsibilities in future now there can be various types of training there can be on the job training there can be off the job training means the training can be provided while the employee being on the job or the training can be provided by sending the employee off the job means by sending him to some specific training facility there can be regular and routine training facilities and then there can be some specific training also means there can be routine training like there can be a policy that every 6 months there will be a training for 3 days or every year there should be a training of one week or there can be some specific training means the organization it finds that the front line staff they lack in a particular foreign language then they can provide the specific training the next part is employee motivation from the hrm policies of the service leader organizations as discussed in detail in our previous lecture on this unit it was clear that the quality of service delivery in tourism is greatly dependent on the job satisfaction of employees see in our earlier lecture we have spoken about the service organizations and the leaders in service organizations we have spoken that the delivery of services that depends on the job satisfaction of the employees therefore keeping the employees motivated it becomes an important part of human resource management policy of an organization besides using the uh, usual reward and incentive hr managers they also need to be careful about the positive and negative strokes that affect the employees motivation levels there can be negative strokes like you do not know how to do your work properly means if there is a lacuna if the employee is not doing his work then the manager can tell him that you do not know how to do your work properly but this is a negative stroke it will decrease the motivation level he can also use a positive stroke like you can do your work better by using this or that method so the positive strokes they help the employees to keep their motivation levels high and ultimately it improves the service quality see because if the employees if they are motivated they are satisfied then definitely their service delivery will be far better and if the service quality is good then the customer satisfaction will also be there next is performance appraisal performance appraisal is the systematic review of an employee's performance to understand the abilities of an employee for future growth and development employee's performance is measured and compared with predetermined or mutually agreed upon performance benchmarks to decide the future career path of the employee means in case of performance appraisal we first of all we measure the employee performance then we compare it with some predetermined or mutually agreed upon benchmarks and then we go for the results of the performance appraisal now the performance appraisal it can be informance uh, informal performance appraisal wherein the managers they keep giving feedback to their subordinates with regard to their performance and no formal record is maintained also the performance appraisal it can be formal performance appraisal most of the organizations they prefer formal performance appraisal methods wherein the employee performance is measured using some specific formats or forums and then it is compared with the predetermined benchmarks if the employee performance is better then he can be rewarded or if the employee performance is lacking somewhere then he can be provided with necessary training and development facilities then there can be transfers promotion and demotion transfer means to change the work location of an employee it can be a geographic transfer where the employee is shifted from one location to another location means from one city to another city it can be from one country to another country but transfer can also be within the same location by changing the employee's department at the same job position see in case of transfer the employee's position in the organization it does not change only the work location can be changed or his work profile can be changed his department can be changed purpose for transfers can be better utilization of employee skills 
if you think that employees have particular skills which can be utilized better at some other department or at some other location then he can be transferred sometime employee they also request for some personal reasons sometimes transfer can also be done as a mechanism to conflict resolution means there can be some conflict between two employees or between the subordinates and the managers then in that case sometimes the company they can transfer one of them to resolve that conflict and sometimes the transfers they can also be done as a measure of punishment then next is promotion promotion means increasing the span of role and responsibilities of an employee in case of promotion the role and responsibilities of an employee they are increased it can be or cannot be accompanied with financial benefits generally promotions they are also having some financial benefits but not necessarily an employee can be promoted without any financial benefits also then demotion demotion is the process to reduce the authorities and responsibilities of an employee as a matter of punishment and it should be avoided because a demoted employee will have low level of motivation and it can result in the uh, poor service quality then there can be separation also the separation it can be on account of retirement it can be on account of resignation and it can be on account of termination managing the separation of an employee is also an important part of human resource management process employee separation can be on account of retirement or superannuation on attaining the statutory age limit means there is a legal age limit to work and once this age limit is attained an employee is retired or superannuated these superannuated employees they are brand ambassadors of the organization in terms of its hr policies so superannuated employees they should be dealt with respect and care now another way of separation can be resignation it is the way by which an employee leaves the organization by his own wish so the reasons for employee resignation should be probed and recorded while conducting the exit interview means if the an employee gives his resignation then an exit interview should also be conducted and in that exit interview the reasons for his resignation they should be probed they should be inquired into as well as they should be recorded because these are the feedback which can help us in improving the hr policies of the organization then another way by which we can separate an employee is termination it is the removal of employee by the organization means when the employee is removed by the organization it can be in case of a punishment it can be because of the grave misconduct or grave mistake committed by an employee or the employee is not fit to be uh, working in that particular organization in case of termination all the legal requirements they should be met with and the employee should always be informed about the reasons for his and her termination there can be some legal requirements as per the employment contract for the termination of employees means he must be given some notice or some advance salary need to be paid so in case of termination all these requirements they should be met with and the employee should be also given the reasons for his termination of services so we have seen that what is the process of human resource management we started with the planning how to plan for the human resources then we go for the recruitment to create the pool of eligible candidates then how to select the best possible candidate then how to train them how to develop them then how to keep them motivated how to measure their performance and how to uh, the separation of the employees also we have discussed about the transfers and promotions and demotions now there is a human resource planning and development model that has been developed by mr vs mahesh as we have spoken in our previous lecture he is the former vice president of human resources at taj group of hotels so he has developed this model for human resource planning and development specifically in case of tourism services so first is correctly plan for the requisite number of people required at each level of each category of skill providing for exception attrition and internal development needs so it is the same thing which we have discussed about the human resource planning we need to plan the requisite number of people at each level and what are the skills required also we need to consider our expansion plans the attrition rate and internal development needs so that deals basically with the planning part 
second we need to identify the sources from where the people they can be recruited it the recruitment can be made from the fully trained people who can operate directly on the job as well as the recruitment can be for the new entrants who will require uh, appropriate training before commencing the work next we need to set up an appropriate and cost effective recruitment system first we need to decide from where to recruit and then we need to set up a, a recruitment system then after recruitment there should be an effective induction and training system to cater for every source of recruitment then we need to identify and make available the requisite number of trainers to operate these systems see we have decided to make the training systems but if we do not have the adequate number of trainers then it will be of no use so first we need to have the training system and also we need to have the requisite number of trainers then we need to install an effective personal administration system to take care of those recruited personal administration means how to manage those persons how the salary bills their live record their performance everything it comes under the personal administration to whom transfer how to promote how to demote and how to manage the separations this all comes under the personal administration so there should be an effective personal administration system then we need to uh, set up a discipline management system whereby all employees they are prepared to accept the basic norms of discipline at work then we need to create a collaborative climate for industrial peace so that the customers they are not in the least aware of unavoidable tensions that are likely to occur in any management employee relationship means if there is any tension in the management employee relationship then it should not affect the customers in any way then in the end we need to set up a team of human resource professionals who have the requisite professional and personal skills to ensure the continuous monitoring and improvements of the integrated human resource planning and development system described above so in this lecture we have again uh, we have spoken about the human resource management we did some revision about the human resource management definition then we go for the human resource management process as some specific steps we discussed about the planning recruitment selection then training and development then we have spoken about the transfers and then we have spoken about the separations also in the end we have spoken about the human resource planning and development model that has been given by mr v s mahesh former vice president human resources at taj group of hotels thank you